In this lecture, we will go through how we can describe signal buses in VHDL, how we can assign value to the signal buses, and how we can create wider signal buses out of smaller pieces by gluing them together. So what is the benefit of using signal buses, and when should we use them? Imagine that we have a circuit with a number of inputs, A0 to A3, B0 to B3, and some outputs Z0 to Z3. Now if the inputs A0 to A3 represent for example an integer value that is binary coded, then it makes more sense to group this signal together to form a signal bus or vector, like this. So now the signal A is 4 bits wide, and so is B and Z. So the benefit here is that we get a much more compact notation in VHDL where we only need three rows in the declaration of the entity instead of 12. So another benefit is that once we have this as a single bus, we can typecast it to an integer. And then we can use the addition and subtraction operator on that integer value. And then we can cast it back to a std logic vector. So this makes it very easy to perform addition and subtraction. To make use of the std logic vector, we must first include the library IEEE. And then we must tell the tool that we would like to use the package std underscore logic underscore 1164. Then we can use the data type std logic vector. And when we use this vector, we must also specify how wide this vector is. So here we specify it as 3 down to 0. So this means that we will get 4 bits. And the down to indicates that we count from left to right. So the leftmost bit is the highest bit or bit number 3. As you might remember, we could use logical operators when working with the std logic data type. The same goes for the std logic vector. So when we perform logic operations with this data type, it is performed bitwise. So for example, if we add 0011, with 1010, the result is 0010. So we perform the AND operation bitwise between these two values. To assign a value to a std logic vector, we must enclose the value within quotation marks instead of single quote that we use for the std logic. Also, the number of values within the quotes must match the number of bits of the vector that we are assigning to. There are a number of ways to assign a value to a signal bus, and we will go through some of them here. The first one, we use the keyword others. So in this example, all the bits of set will be set to the value 1. Now this is quite handy, especially if we have a large vector with many bits. Also, if we change the width of set later on, we don't need to modify this code, as it adapts to the new width. We could set individual bits of the vector to some specific value, like this. Or we can do it on a single line with this more compact notation. So this will set bit 1 and 3 to 1, and bit 0 and 2 to 0. Or we can do it like this, where we set bit 1 and 3 to 1, and all other bits of set to 0. We can also assign a part of the signal bus to a specific value. So here we set the upper two bits, bit 3 and 2, to the value 1, 0. Then we set the lower two bits, bit 1 and 0, to 1 and 0. We can also enumerate the assignment on a single line like this. So here we set bit 1 to 1, bit 2 to 0, bit 0 to 0, and bit 3 to 1. So note here that I have mixed the order of the bits. And this is perfectly okay, because we specify which value each bit should have, but the order doesn't matter here. If we instead do like this, the order is very important. So the leftmost one will be assigned to bit number three, and the rightmost zero will be assigned to bit number zero. We will get the same result if we enclose the value within quotes 
So before you note when we have a single value we enclose it with a single quote but when we assign a complete vector or part of a vector we use a quote instead. Lastly we can also aggregate parts of vectors together. So here we kind of glue together two vectors 1 0 and 1 0 and then we assign this to the signal bus set. I would say that there are no preferred way on which style you should use when assigning values to a signal bus. I think you should use the one that makes your description most readable and easy to follow. However, I would like to point out that the keyword others is really powerful, as this one will adapt to the size of your target signal bus. Aggregating vectors means that you take smaller vectors and glue them together to get a wider vector. This is quite common in VHDL. In this example, we will take three vectors and glue them together. So we have the first vector, which is a 4 bit wide, which is an instruction vector. Then we have some flags, which is 2 bits wide. And we have a data vector that is 8 bits wide. And now we would like to put these together to form a single vector. We can use the ampersand symbol in VHDL. So note here that the order is important. The first instruction will place at the highest bits, then come the status flags, and at the lowest bits the data vector will be placed. There are two ways to specify the width of a signal bus. So the previously we used the down to keyword. So here we specify a vector that has the width 2 down to 0. Then we assign a value to this signal bus and here the most significant bit, bit number 2, will be assigned a value 1 and the other bits will be assigned zeros. The other way to declare a signal vector is to use the keyword 2 instead. So here we set the width to 0, 2, 2. And now we assign the same value to set as in the previous example. The difference here is that bit number 0 will be set to 1 this time and the other ones will be set to 0. So the way the bit counts are reversed in this case. So bit number 2 is the rightmost bit and bit number 0 is the leftmost bit. I would say that the keyword down to is the most commonly used in VHDL. Probably this is due to that this is more like the way we write binary numbers on paper, where we have the most significant bit to the left. When describing signal buses in VHDL, you are of course free to choose from the keyword down to or to. However, you should be very careful if you start to mix these two. So in this example, we have an input A that we declare as 2 down to 0. Then we have an output set that we declare 0, 2, 2. So these two has the opposite numbering of the bits. So if we now assign set the inverse of A, we might not get what we expect. Because we have declared them in the opposite order, set 0 will be the inverse of A2 and so on. So be really careful if you have both of these in your description and I would recommend you to stick to one of them. And preferably the down to as this is the most commonly used in VHDL.